Lord, in your glory. You, Lord, seated upon your throne, said, no, I will not let that one go. No, I will not let that one be left alone. But, Lord God, you said in your word that the 90 and 9 were there. You went out just for that one. And I thank you tonight that we, Lord God, we were, we were that one, hallelujah, that went out, Lord God. And your love for us that drove you to come for us, oh God. It's your love that left the 90 and 9. Lord God, you said you didn't come for the healthy, but you came for us, the sick, oh God. Hallelujah. Because it's not the healthy that need the doctor, but it's the sick that need the doctor. And we thank you, Lord God, for being our doctor, for being our healer, for being our provider, for being everything that we could ever need, Lord God. We thank you for touching our lives as a people, Lord God. We thank you for being with us here tonight. We thank you, Lord God, for sending your word for us tonight, oh God. Lord Jesus, our cups are turned up. We are waiting on you, Lord God. We want to hear from you, Lord Jesus. Because if we don't hear from you, Lord God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do if we don't hear a word from you, Lord Jesus? We'll be completely lost without you, without direction, oh God, without wisdom, without knowledge, without understanding, oh God. We lack everything, Lord God, and we'll be completely nothing without you. So, Lord God, we honor you tonight. We exalt you tonight. We wait at your feet tonight to hear from you, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that spirit of obedience will just saturate us tonight. That we take heed to your word. That every heart will be receptive tonight and apply it to our life tonight. Because, Lord God, you're looking for an obedient people. Lord God, you are our shepherd and we are your sheep. The sheep of your pasture tonight, oh God. And we want you to lead us. We want you to guide us. We want you to direct us, oh God. Because, Lord God, we have no other protection, no other hope but you, Lord God. So we look to you, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And we commit our life. We commit this service. We commit this night. We commit the man of God into your hands even now. Hallelujah. Have your way in the house. Do what you desire to do. Do what you desire to do in whatever way you desire to do it tonight, oh God. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, Lord God. Saturate this sanctuary, Lord God. From the pulpit, Lord God, to the pew, Lord God. Show, oh God, saturate this very atmosphere even now, Lord God. Every other spirit that is not of God must be subject to you, Lord God, because you are the head of all principalities, of all powers, of all dominions, oh God. You are the head of all, Lord Jesus, and you are the Lord of all. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you. We honor you. We magnify you. We lift you up tonight. We worship you just because of who you are. Not even just because of what you've done and what you can do, but because of who you are, Lord God. When we stop and think about your faithfulness toward us, oh Lord Jesus. The times truly, Lord God, that we forget you, Lord God, and wander away and do our own thing. But yet still, your arms are open and extended toward us. Your arms are open and extended. The rain, you still allow it to fall upon us. You still provide for us. You still keep us. You still protect us, oh God. You still keep a roof over our head, oh God. You still allow, Lord God, us to work, to toil, and get the resources we need to live from day to day. Because you said, Lord God, you'd give us that daily bread. Because you are our Father. You are Abba. Hallelujah. And we can call upon you as our Father. Lord God, you said in your word, if earthly fathers being wicked know how to give good gifts, how much more you, our Heavenly Father. So we thank you tonight for sending every good gift, every perfect gift, which comes from you, Lord God. We thank you that you're a God that gives liberally and you don't upbraid. Hallelujah. We honor you. We thank you. We exalt you. We bless your name tonight. King of kings, Lord of lords, great I am that I am, Jehovah Jireh, El Shaddai, Adonai, hallelujah, Prince of Peace, mighty God, our righteousness, our shield, our tower, hallelujah, our covering, hallelujah, hallelujah, our shelter in the time of storm, hallelujah, thank you, thank you, thank you for being our refuge, thank you for being our strength, hallelujah, thank you for being our strength in the times of weakness, hallelujah, thank you that your strength is made perfect in our weakness, we honor you, we exalt you, we glorify you, have your way, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I present Minister Cliff to the church as he comes to deliver the word of God as the man of God. He stands in the gap for our pastor, Andrew Henry. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Praise the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, for bringing us here tonight. Jesus, thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your cleansing power. 
Oh God, thank you, Lord Jesus, for your anointing, Jesus. Oh God, thank you for your leading, Jesus. Thank you for your guidance, Lord. Jesus, I pray tonight, Lord, that whatever you want to say, Lord Jesus, you could use me to speak to us. Oh God, speak even to me, Lord Jesus. Oh God, for even I need a word. Oh God, I pray, Jesus, that, oh God Almighty, you take this vessel, Lord. Cleanse it even now. Purge my lips, Jesus. Clear my mind. Clear my thoughts. Oh God Almighty, I pray, Jesus, you get the glory because you deserve the glory. Jesus, and you know that your people need a word. Oh God, I give you thanks. I give you praise, Lord Jesus. I present my body, oh God, to you, Lord Jesus, as a living sacrifice. Jesus, use me, Lord, in whatever way you will. And when you're finished, Jesus, you know what to do. Pull the plug, oh God Almighty, oh God, that I do not go past what you have given me to say. Jesus, have thine own way in this place, I pray. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Grace, mercy, and peace to everyone. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is our soon coming King. Amen. I'm so glad that Jesus loves me. Amen. We have to personalize it. Amen. Because sometimes we can sing it for others. We can sing it for someone else. Amen. But when it comes hallelujah to singing it for ourselves sometimes we don't believe it for ourselves amen so many times we believe a miracle for somebody else amen but the very infirmity the very thing that we carry hallelujah we don't believe god for it for ourselves amen but i pray that jesus christ would change our mind on that amen it's, it's time for us to start believing the word of god for ourselves Amen. It's good that I believe God for you. Amen. But I got to believe God for me. Amen. Praise Jesus. Tonight we're going to start off by reading Amen. Psalm chapter 3. Amen. We'll read the first three verses. Amen. Praise Jesus. You may stand for the reading of the word. Amen. Praise God. Psalm chapter 3. The first three verses. It says, Lord... How are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of mine head. Amen. Praise Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. I bring you greetings on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Andrew S. Henry. Amen. He could not be here tonight. Amen. And I was tossed in. Amen. The hot seat. Amen. Praise God. And I give God thanks. Amen. Psalm chapter 3. David starts out by saying, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. And he continues to say, many there be which say of, of my soul, there's no help for him in God. David was a shepherd boy. Amen. Praise God. The story of David is very encouraging because David had tons of victories. Amen. But David also had tons of failures. Amen. And just looking at the life of David, you know, it, it's encouraging to the child of God because you realize that David was a real man. Amen. He lived a real life. Amen. He struggled for real, just as the child of God struggles for real. Amen. So we see, amen, in the book of 1 Samuel where, amen, the, the armies the, of the Philistines, they, you know, there was a war going on. Amen. Praise Jesus. And David's brothers went down 
Amen. To battle. And they left David home. Amen. Praise God. David was left home while they went to battle. Amen. And it's funny because, you know, God does not look at the outward stature of a man, but God looks at the heart of a man. And here we had a little shepherd boy who, amen, he was just taking care of his father's sheep. Amen. But the will of God would have it that his father would say, David, I want you to run along and bring some cheese and some food for the boys who are down at battle. Amen. Praise God. I know it's funny because his brothers, and, and we see so many times in, in Bible where, you know, amen, the, the fight comes within your very own house. Amen. Praise God. And his brothers thought they, they had it under control. You know, they're going down to battle. Yet, it's funny because none of them stepped up to say, I'm going to fight Goliath. Amen. Praise God. But this little stripling boy came with cheese and food for, amen, his brothers. He came with a, a genuine, you know, out of a genuine heart, genuine spirit, amen, to come and, and bring food, you know, for his people. Amen. Praise God. And while he was there, amen, Goliath stood there breathing out threatening words. Amen. And the picture I'm trying to paint Amen. Praise God is that the enemy always comes at you with words. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Because words have a way of, amen, intimidating people. Amen. Words have a way of causing people to be afraid. Amen. People to cower. People to get timid. Amen. People to turn Amen. Away from whatever it is that they went out to do. Amen. Praise God. But David heard, amen, these threatenings. Amen. But David, amen, praise God, was not afraid. Amen. And, and we know David wasn't afraid because David throughout his life was a natural shepherd boy. He, he had it in his heart. To take care, amen, of, of sheep, amen. So that very thing that was in David, amen, when he was taking care of animals, amen, and the predators wanted to, amen, take away the animals, that very same love inside of this young boy, it stood up, amen, because there was a need, amen. He said, is there not a cause, amen, and this Young shepherd boy, amen, he stood up even though there was words that were being uttered, amen, praise God. But David was trusting in God, amen, because David already realized that, amen, when he does things out of the goodness of his heart, amen, that God always comes through for him, amen, praise God. So David stood up and said, what is going on here? This man and this army, they are breathing out wicked words against the people of God. And he says to Saul, let me go. And we know the story. He, you know, he tells Saul that, listen, you know, I used to take care of animals, you know, and they threatened the animals, and you know what I did to them. And we know the story. Amen. Praise God. Saul said, go ahead. Amen. But before David went to battle, amen, Saul said, here, I want to equip you with something. Hallelujah. I want to equip you. Here's my armor. Put this on. Amen. Praise God. And David, he essayed to do it. He tried to put it on. Amen. But when he put it on, he realized that, you know, he's, he's not used to this. Amen. Praise God. This is, a, a diff this is different for him. 
Amen. Because when, when he was protecting, amen, the sheep and the animals, amen, praise God, that, that wasn't the armor that he was wearing. Amen. And he just wasn't comfortable because he's like, how, how, how is it now that I am going to put on this armor that's weighing me down and I'm not comfortable in it? Amen. I've never tried it out. And I've, I've, never, I've never gotten the victory in such a, an armor. I don't know this. And David put it off. Amen. But before I continue, amen, David's brothers saw David. And again, words. David's brothers said, hey, you, what are you doing here? You're a troublemaker. Huh? You, you only come to stir up trouble. Right there was really the beginning of David's trouble. That was one of the first signs of jealousy, hatred, whatever you want to call it. Amen. Praise God. And, and you can even say an enemy. Amen. Praise God. Because they were the ones who were chosen quote unquote. They were the ones who were taken from Amen Jesse's house to go down to battle. And they left David home. Amen. But then David, when he stood up and the brothers saw him, Amen, something flared up inside of them. That was the first part. Amen. Praise God. Then after David now decided that he is going to stand up and defend the people of God. Amen. Tonight's word is called trusting in God's shield. Trusting in God's shield. So David, I love this story. So David now stood up and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that even dares to defy the armies? The living God. Let me at him. Not for David's glory. Not for show. But because there was a cause. There was a real cause. And it was motivated by love. David was motivated by love. Amen. Praise God. And when David stepped out. David stepped out trusting in the armor of God. He did not go out with the shield of men, but he went out trusting in the shield of God. Amen. Praise God. And then we see immediately after that, Saul said, come, David. I want you to live with me. You're not going back home anymore. You're staying with me. Amen. Praise God. And we see that immediately the women began to sing their cheers. Saul slayed his thousands and David his ten thousands. Amen. Praise God. And there again, jealousy. And I'm painting the picture because... David's life, when he says, how are they increased? That troubled me. It started somewhere. But as the anointing leads you, <laughs> it, they will be increased that trouble you. Because David, he didn't do anything of his own accord, but he was led by the Spirit. And I always laugh, you know, because they say, well, Saul killed his thousands and David is ten thousands. And I usually laugh because I'm like, imagine if the two got together. Because we know that one can chase a thousand. So if the one who chased a thousand got together with David, you do the math. Amen. Praise God. But too many times, jealousy causes division. 
Amen. And, and when the kingdom of God should be advancing or multiplying. Amen. Praise God. As we've been hearing, there's more division in the body than multiplication. Because God's multiplication is not like ours. Exponentially, he multiplies. So we see that David now has gotten to himself another enemy. And this is early on in his walk. And now Saul, we know the story, begins to chase David all over. So when we hear David saying, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. David is, he can see over his, the whole course of his life. Amen, praise God. From, from his brothers to Saul to his son. Imagine. And everybody else in between. But your brother and your son. How are they increased that trouble me? Many they be that rise up against me. Not just a few. But David, as we, we saw in the earlier chapters, you know, when he says, why do the heathen rage and, and the people imagine a vain thing? Amen. They rose up against the Lord and his Christ. Amen. Praise God. And, and the thing is, David is standing up for what is right. It's not even David. He cannot help himself. But the anointing pushes you to do that which is right. The anointing pushes you to do what is right. And when you fight to do what is right, you will have enemy. But the thing is, we don't want to be found on the wrong side. Because we know what the Lord does to the enemies. So we have to make sure that we are on the Lord's side. How are they increased that trouble me? When you stand up for righteousness, you are not going to be loved by the adversary. Amen. Praise God. Now, the adversary is not necessarily your brother or your sister. Amen. Praise God. But the spirits, it's the spirits that fight against righteousness and holiness. Amen. Praise God. But David was not afraid. There was a cause. And David, he couldn't help himself. He just had to stand up for righteousness. Amen. Praise God. In Proverbs chapter 3. Amen. The wise man, Solomon, which was one of David's sons. Amen. He, he penned some instructions. Amen. Of wisdom. Amen. That was supposed to be passed on. Amen. To his sons and to his son's sons and to us. Amen. Praise God. And we're going to read Proverbs chapter 3 from the 16th verse. Amen. Praise God. It says, length of days is in her right hand. And in her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. And all her paths of our peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. And happy is everyone that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up. The clouds drop down the dew. My son... Let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace 
to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. So we'll stop right there. Amen. Solomon penned these words. Amen. Praise God. And when you read through this, amen, and you compare it to the life of David, amen, his father, amen, you see that David was a man who put his trust in God. Amen. Praise Jesus. And, and in, in Psalm chapter 3, amen, David, when he spoke about these people that rose up against him, amen, praise God. We saw where David, he said something about, about sleep. Amen, praise God. In verse 6, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Amen. Praise God. In verse 5, he said, I laid me down and slept. I awaked for the Lord sustained me. That's the verse. Amen. Praise God. So we see that David, amen, was trusting in the Lord. Amen. With all of his heart. And he was not leaning on his own understanding. But David in all his ways was acknowledging God. And God was directing David's path. Amen. Praise God. David, this man of God, before he died, I remember he, he spoke to Solomon. And we read what's penned. Amen. Praise God. But David poured into Solomon. Amen. And gave him instructions. Amen. On how he could have good successes. And he left instructions on the things that he must tear down. Amen. And the things that must be killed. Amen. Praise God. And, and the psalmist. Amen. He made sure that he imparted to his son, amen, all of this wisdom that he had. And, and Solomon picked it up. Amen. Praise God. And, and God continued to pour into Solomon and to speak to Solomon. Amen. But you could see the child of God when he follows the pattern of God that he has peace. And he has rest for his soul. Amen. Praise God. Jesus Christ has left so many clouds of witnesses for us to take from. Amen. Praise God. Because we don't have to make all of the same mistakes that, amen, the forefathers made and the, the stalwarts of faith that they made. Because we have the cloud of witnesses to stand upon. We have. Amen. The word of God to stand upon. Amen. Praise God. But I want to just read some scriptures. Amen. Praise God. Because sometimes the child of God, even though, amen, praise God, God has called the child of God, pulled them out, washed them, cleansed them, fed them. Sometimes the child of God gets, amen, spiritually obese. Amen. Praise God. Comfortable. Amen. Praise God. And, and then what happens is the child of God begins to esteem the Holy One, the Holy God, the righteous God lightly. Amen. Praise God. And sometimes, amen, it causes us great pain because we begin to esteem God lightly. Amen. Praise God. 
So we're going to read from we're going to read from Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 15 Amen to verse 21. It says you can follow when you get there. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxing fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. Amen, praise God. Keep in mind, amen, praise God, because we're talking about David, right? So keep in mind that David, amen, even in the previous chapter, he was talking about the kings of the earth, the people who knew God and that turned from what they knew. They turned from the laws of God. Amen, praise God. And it vexed David's spirit. But David determined to stand for righteousness. Amen, praise God. And this, amen, is, is what happens to the child of God when, amen, they begin to esteem the God of their salvation lightly. They start to fall back. Amen. So it says, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. To gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Amen. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation. Children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Amen. So we see. The consequences of the people of God when, amen, they begin to drift, amen, from the laws of God, from the things of, of God that the laws that they knew to be true, the laws that they held fast to, amen. We see that they provoked the Lord God of heaven. They provoked God. And it's not a nice thing to provoke God. Amen. Praise God. Even though we see that God had a plan for them. Amen. Praise God. We see that God's grace, amen, did not begin in the New Testament. Amen. Praise God. But God was moved, amen, to move against the children of Israel because they forsook God, the one which made them, the creator of heaven and earth, who created his people to worship him. And what did they do? They began to worship things that were created by man's hand. They made gods out of created things. They made idols out of things that could never take the place of God. God called his people to worship him. But instead, God's people, after time, began to worship idols. Amen, praise God. And, and we see that, amen, an idol could be whatever that takes the place of God. 
Because whatever occupies your time more than your relationship with God is an idol. Amen. Praise God. It can be your phone. It can be your tablet. It can be anything. If it takes the place of your worship to the true and living God, it is an idol. And we have to mark it. Amen. Praise God. Because these things move God to jealousy. Amen. Praise God. But David, amen, the one who said, how are they increased that trouble me? Because he's standing up for righteousness. His soul was grieved and vexed. Amen. Because those who knew the laws of God. Amen. They turned. Amen. From the truth of God. Amen. Praise God. And, and David, his soul was upset. His soul was upset. He was grieved. Because they began to trust in horses. They began to trust in chariots. Amen. Praise God. They began to trust in themselves. They began to go in their own strength. Amen. Praise God. And, and Jesus Christ is speaking to us because Jesus doesn't want us to go in our own anything. He wants us to go in the name of the Lord. He said, whatever you do in word and in deed, do it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. So David now, when David went to fight against the Philistines, amen, praise God. David refused to use the strategies, amen, and the armor of Saul. But he made up in his mind that he's going to trust God. He's not going to go in his strength. He's not going to go in his might. But he's going to go in the power of the Lord. He made that resolve. Because he could have said, you know what? This is a big giant. Amen. Praise God. You know the big giant in your life. Amen. I know the giant that stands before me in my life. But am I going to go? In my own strength. Am I going to go in my own armor? I could never be victorious. But I got to go. Amen. In the armor of God. Amen. David said, thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. You're my shield. You're my shield. Hallelujah. And if I'm going to go to battle, if I'm going to stand up against anything, I'm going to go in the name of the Lord. Thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. Amen. Praise God. But too many times, we let something else take the place of the shield of God. Too many times we allow something else to take the place of God. Too many times we create our own shield. Too many times we create Amen. Our own securities. And we forsake the shield. The protection of God. The comfort of God. We reject it. 
Amen, praise God. And that comfort could be whatever. It could be counsel from men. Advice from somebody. It could be whatever. What is that armor? Amen, praise God, that we're trusting in. What are we trusting in? Is it a horse or a chariot? We have to ask ourselves that question. Amen, praise God, because David said, I'm not going to trust in any of these. But I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm not going to trust in my own armor. Praise God. I'm not going to trust, amen, in my own strategies. Because my strategies are failures. But the strategies of God always works. Psalm 91. Amen. Praise God. Psalm 91. Praise the name of Jesus. Psalm 91. We're going to read from verse 1. Amen. To 16. Amen. Praise God. Because it's, it's a problem when we don't put our trust in God. Amen. In our dispensation, we have to call him by name when we don't put our trust in Jesus Christ. It's a problem. Because too many times we, we contrive our own strategies. We come up with our own concoctions on how to win a battle. We have our own plan. Jesus, help me. We have our own plan on how to win the war. And Jesus is saying, no. I am your shield. I am your exceeding great reward. Hallelujah. Not your shield that you made with metal. Because we can make shields. We take metal and we call the metalsmith and we bang it together and say, we made a shield. But that shield cannot protect us. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You cannot see strongholds. This is not a carnal war. This is not a carnal battle. You may come up with a plan. I may come up with a plan. And it may look good on paper. But it will fail. But we have to trust in the strategies of God. We have to trust, amen, in the shield of God. Because David said, thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. I got that revelation, he's saying. That when he trusts in Jesus, Jesus always saw him through. Psalm 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him, in him, hallelujah, surely he shall deliver thee from the sneer of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Stop right there. Amen, praise God. Because God wants to be our covering. God wants to be our shield. Amen. We just read. It says that he will cover us with his feathers. But we create our own coverings. We create our own coverings. When Jesus is saying, I want to cover you. I want to protect you. I want to lead you out. 
am the one who does it. And not another. Hallelujah. He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. Key word is trust. Trust is the key word. Amen. Praise God. Because we have to trust. Amen. In the shield of God. Thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. We got to say it until we believe it. Because he is our shield. But we don't apply the shield. We don't use the shield. Imagine Jesus Christ is a shield about us. Amen. Praise God. But we create our own shields inside the shield. And they end up being projectiles. We got to cast away those things from us. Tell your neighbor, cast away your shield. Who gave you that shield? Who gave you that advice? Who gave you that counsel? Cast it away. Get rid of it. Trust in the shield of God. Because his shield is a perfect covering. When you abide in the shield of God. Hallelujah. That's why the psalmist said he could just lay him down and sleep. Because he's wrapped up in the shield of God. So when the arrows fly by day. When everything flies. He could rest in the shield of God. Forget about your shield. Your shield can only stop water. But the shield of God will protect you. There is comfort when you're wrapped up in the shield of God. Amen. Praise God. And, and you know what? When you're in the shield of God. Amen. Praise God. And the enemy is hurling insults. You don't even hear it. Because you're wrapped up in the shield of God. Hallelujah. When you're in the shield of God, you rest comfortable. When you're in the shield of God, hallelujah, nobody can steal your joy. When you're wrapped up in the shield of God, hallelujah, the only thing you got to do is look to the hills. From whence cometh your help? My help cometh from the Lord. Don't trust in those shields. Those strategies. Let's not trust in them. But let's trust in the strategies of God. In the truth of God. Let us not twist the word. Let us not be deceitful. But rest in God and let your yeas be yeas and your nays be nay. What devil can kill you? When you're resting in God, he gives sweet sleep. Hallelujah. He covers us. He shall cover thee. Hallelujah. With feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. That's it right there. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. When you step outside of truth, you're in danger. But I'm going to rest in truth. When you start to deal untruthfully you're a target bombs drop all over you because you stepped outside but you gotta abide in the truth hallelujah you gotta abide in the truth his truth shall be your shield and buckler thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night 
when they come, you shall not be afraid. Nor for the arrow that fly it by day. Hallelujah. Isn't it something when you're abiding in the shield of God. When the arrows are flying, you don't even have to duck. Because I can't see behind my head. But when I'm in the shield of God, I don't have to duck. And the arrows are still flying. But he has me covered. But when I step outside of the truth of God, then I got to duck. I got to bob. I got to weave. I got to contrive. I got to use my shield. And that's when you become tired and weary. Because every second you got to be turning your little shield that you made with metal. And God is saying, abide in me and just rest. When you're abiding in the truth of God, you will not be afraid for the terror by night. Nor for the arrow that flies by day. Nor for the pestilence that walk it in darkness. Nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. That means all kinds of things are going on around you. But you're safe and secure in the shelter of God. It says a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh thee because it cannot come into the shield of God it says only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked it says because thou has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. That means this is where I live. This is where I abide. And I'm not moving. Because the most high is our habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall, shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. To keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands. Lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Hallelujah. This is somebody who is abiding. Amen. And trusting in the shield of God. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample on the feet. Because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. So because you are putting your trust in God. And you're loving God. You're loving his truth. He will it says he will deliver you hallelujah because he had set his love upon me therefore will i deliver him i will set him on high because he hath known my name amen praise god this just reminds me of the philadelphia church Amen. Because they knew the name of God. And they refused to sell out the name of Jesus. And it says in the Philadelphia church, they were weak. But when you're weak, but you're resting in the arms of God. In the shield of God. God will keep you. Just don't deny his name. Don't deny his word. Don't deny the truth. What is truth? Thy word, O oh Lord, is truth. It says, I will deliver him. 
and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. People of God, this fight is to maintain your faith and confidence in God. You have been born again. But now you got to keep that which you have. You got to hold on to that which is true. Let no man what take your crown. Because the fight is to get us to deny his name. That's why we see where it says some will be cast into prison and will, and will be tried. Ten days. But just be faithful and don't deny my name. Don't allow the enemy to cause you to come out from your place. But stay in the shelter of God. And it says with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. With long life will I satisfy him. Hallelujah. What life is long but eternal life. I will satisfy him with it. But all you got to do is rest in his truth. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Just abide in the truth of God. Don't sell it. Don't swap it. Don't trade it. Don't mortgage it. Don't sell it out at all. Keep. Keep it. Guard it. The Bible said, buy the truth and sell it not. Don't sell what Jesus has given you. Amen. Praise God because God Almighty, amen, he wants us to have eternal life. Praise the name of Jesus. Psalm 119. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 136 to 142. The same psalmist says, Rivers of waters run down mine eyes. Because they keep not thy law. Thank you, Jesus. Righteous art thou, O Lord, and upright are thy judgments. Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. My zeal hath consumed me because mine enemies have forgotten thy word. Stop there. The psalmist says they have forgotten which means that they once knew it. You cannot forget if you did not know. But they forgot. They once knew it. Amen. Praise God. They once knew it. And now they have forgotten it. It says, Thy word. Is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. I am small and despised, yet do not I forget thy precepts. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Praise God. We have to. As children of the most high God. Pay very close attention to this. Because we know the truth. We know the laws of God. We got to be careful. 
that we don't let them slip from us. Because we know them. Let us not forget them. Let us not forget them. Hallelujah. Psalm 144. Verses 7 to 15 says. Send thine hand from above. Rid me and deliver me out of great waters. From the hand of strange children. Whose mouth speaketh vanity. And their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God. Upon a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings will I sing praises unto thee. It is he that giveth salvation unto kings. Who delivereth David his servant from the hurtful sword. He says, rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children. He says again, whose mouth speaketh vanity. He's saying twice, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Why is David saying all of this? This is the heart of God speaking. It says, so that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. Because these things, brothers and sisters, we think that if we err or we mess up, amen, praise God, that it stops with us. But the next generation, the children are watching. Amen, praise God. And David was grieved because this has to be passed on to the children. So David is saying, get rid of it so that our sons... Hallelujah, praise God. So that our sons and our daughters may flourish. Amen. And that, what verse is it? 12. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. That our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. That our garners may be full Affording all manner of store. That our sheep <laughs> may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets. That our oxen may be strong to labor. That there be no breaking in, nor going out. That there be no complaining in our streets. Happy is that people. That is in such a case. Yay! Happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Amen. Praise God. The Spirit of God. Amen. Praise God. It's not just to speak in tongues. Amen. Praise God. And feel good. Amen. But amen is to lead us into all truth. Amen. Praise God. So if right now you're, you're, you're not fully abiding, amen, in the truth of God, just allow the Holy Spirit to lead you there. That's the grace of God. Because God is not trying to kill you. But the Spirit, which is the Spirit of truth, is to lead you into all truth. It's to lead us into all truth. Amen. Praise God. And, and we got we to gotta be led by the Spirit. Those who are led by the Spirit are sons of God. Don't fight the Spirit of God. Submit to the Spirit of God. Don't quench the Spirit. Amen. Praise God. But be led by the Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Deuteronomy 33. Amen. Praise God. Verse 26. This scripture, amen. Praise God. This was Moses, the man of God. 
Amen. As he blessed the children of Israel before he died. Amen. Praise God. It says, there is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rided upon the heaven in thy help, and in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge. Amen. Praise God. He's speaking to Jeshurun. This is his blessing. And underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee. And shall say, destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heavens shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel. Who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord? The shield of thy help. And who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemy shall be found liars unto thee. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. Amen. Praise God. Isaiah chapter 41. Verses 8 to 14. Amen. Praise God. Because Jacob. Amen. We know Jacob. In his beginning. Surplanter. Deceptive. Deceitful. Eh? Scammer. Scam artist. Fraudulent. But still God. Loved Jacob. Amen. Praise God. So. If you're not there yet. If I'm not there yet, I just have to keep on being led by the spirit of truth. The same spirit that led Jacob. Hallelujah. Until Jacob became Israel. So don't feel as though you are out of this race. Don't think God has given up on you. But you have to be led by his spirit. To get to glory. Hear what the Lord says about Jacob. Hallelujah. This trickster. Deceptive. Hallelujah. Wicked dealings. But still. Hear what God is saying. He says, but thou. Israel. You are my servant. Jacob. Whom I have chosen. The seed of Abraham, my friend, thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and call thee from the chief men thereof. And I said unto thee, thou art my servant. Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Just be led by the Spirit. Reject. If the impetus is in you, reject evil. Hate evil. Eschew it like Job. Hate it. It says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee, shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing. And as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand. Saying unto thee, fear not, I will 
help thee. Again, fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Amen. Praise God. So, we see that the grace of God is always been at work. After all, the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Amen. Praise God. And we see that Jacob had to walk and go through his process. Amen. Praise God. And Jacob got to a place where he had to wrestle with God. Amen. He had to come to the end of himself. Because even when he was going back to face his brother Esau, he was still trying to plan and strategize. Amen. Praise God. And set up his shields and his barricades. Amen. Praise God. He even put everyone in front of himself. And if they would get killed, they would just be a human shield. Praise God. The only one he kept closest was the one that he loved. The most. Praise God. But if everyone that went before him would have gotten slain, then he would know that his brother Esau was robbed. But he still had to be worked on. Amen. Praise God. Because he was still trying to trust in his own ability. In his own, hallelujah, scheming and creating of his own shield. But God never gave up on Jacob. That worm Jacob. But he loved Jacob. Never gave up on Jacob. And then Jacob prevailed. Amen. Praise God. Because that's God. He's a wonderful God. He's a mighty God. He's a wonderful God. And he never gives up. Never gives up. On his own. Praise the name of Jesus. We as children of the Most High God, we are all at a different place in our walk. Amen. Praise God. Jesus came. He lived. Amen. He got baptized. He showed us the way. He taught the disciples. He said, make sure, because he wants everyone to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of the sins. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, you really cannot walk into all truth. W without the Spirit of God, you'll be walking but in circles. Amen. Praise God. So the first thing you got to do is put on Christ by going down in the waters of baptism Amen. Praise God. Get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whatever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of Jesus. That's to remove your sin. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then be led by the Spirit of God. And let Jesus lead you into all truth. Amen. Praise God. Jesus laid it out for us. And all we got to do is just follow the pattern. Amen. Praise God. We see in Bible where someone received the Holy Ghost. But before going, really, where are you going? Go back. Get the baptism and the Holy Ghost. And then go. Go. Go wherever the Spirit of God leads you. 
Let us not trust in horses, in chariots, in uncertain riches. Amen. Praise God. Let us not trust in religion. Let us not trust in anything in this life, in this world. Let us not trust in the arms of flesh. For the arms of flesh will surely fail. Hallelujah. Let us not put on any armor that is not given from God. Let us not trust in anything that God didn't prescribe. But let us trust in the shield of God. For thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. Thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. David realized because he had experiences with God. And he was able to tell you, amen, that when you put your trust in God, when you put your confidence in God, when you walk according to his precepts, when you do what's pleasing in his sight, you will be sheltered. You will be safe. You will be secure. But all we got to do is trust him. All we got to do is trust him. Stand tonight. Jesus didn't intend to lose any. Amen. Praise God that he has called. Jesus does not want his children to perish. Amen. Praise God. But if you've been quenching the spirit, stop it. If evildoers have been enticing you, chase them away. If people have been trying to sway you, To tell you things that are not true. The Bible says that we should hate that. If it's a person, don't hate the person. But hate the spirit. Because that old deceiver was cast out. Amen. Praise God. And, and he's trying to get us. To deny Jesus. To blaspheme against the Lord. To do wickedly. But let us not be. Like the evil one. But let us trust. In the true and living God. Who is able. To keep us. Let us believe his promise. And stand upon his word. Let us not insult God. By not trusting him. When we don't trust him. It's like an insult. When we don't trust God. We're saying he's not able. To keep us. But let us trust Jesus. Let us trust him. Let us lift up our heads to the hills. From whence cometh our help. Our help, our only help, our true help cometh from the Lord. After all, he is the creator of heaven and earth. Who else can I trust? I have to trust the one who created all things. I have to trust the one who knew me before the foundation of the world. I have.
have to trust that one. And his name is Jesus. Today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation. But hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Because God loves us so much that he wants us all for himself. He wants us to walk with him in holiness. He wants us to walk with him and talk with him. Amen. Praise God. Because he is our God. And if he said that he's going to save us, he will save us. But if the impetus is in us, don't fight the impetus to do right. We got to do right. Live right. Talk right. Behave right. Because that is pleasing to the Lord. David said, give ear to my words, O Lord. He said, consider my meditation. He said, hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. He says, for unto thee will I pray. David said, my voice. Shalt thou hear in the morning. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee. And will look up. For thou art not a God. That hath pleasure in wickedness. He said neither shall evil dwell with thee. Evil will not dwell with the most high. He said neither shall evil dwell with thee. He said, the foolish shall not stand in thy sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. So much so that you said to some, depart from me. Thou that work iniquity. The Lord said he hates those that speak leasing. He abhors the bloody and deceitful man. But this is, this is the part that, this is the part now. Amen. Praise God that we have to be found in. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy. And in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Lead me, O oh Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. Make thy way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsel. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgression. For they have rebelled against thee. Amen. Praise God. Because they knew the truth and they forgot the truth. They have rebelled against thee. But let all those that put their trust in thee. Rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy. Because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name. Be joyful in the shield of God. Be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous, the obedient. Those who are obedient to his word. With favor. Undeserved, unmerited, will thou? Thank you, Jesus. I didn't know where you're going.
with thou compass him as with a shield. Praise God. Praise God. I pray that we would take the word seriously and that we would truly begin to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not on our own understanding but in all our ways acknowledge him and it's when we acknowledge him in all our ways then he will direct our path because we must acknowledge him in order for him to direct us so that means you must respond to him when he's speaking Right? So that's one way we can acknowledge him is when we respond to him and say, yes, Lord, I hear you, Lord. Lead me, Lord. Direct me, Lord. So I pray that we would take this word and not just get emotional about it, but take it and really have it just resonate in our spirit. Meditate upon it. Go over the word again and just ask Jesus to just let it take root within us so that it can bring forth fruit because truly we need him to be our shield because without him we're lost we're completely finished without him and we have to really have that understanding to know we have no strength or power of our own that can take us anywhere and it can only take us so far but when our power and strength is done where can we go and that's the time we end up looking to him and calling to him because our own power and strength is finished but we should always be in that state where we understand that we have no strength or power of our own we should be completely dependent upon him at all times and there's a song that says my glory and the lifter of my head my glory and the lifter of my head for thou O Lord Art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. Hallelujah. Father, we give you thanks tonight. We honor you tonight. We thank you for your word. Lord God, we desired a word. We came with an expectation because, Lord God, we know that without a word, we're lost. We don't know where to go, what to do, how to do it, oh God. But, Lord God, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you for using your manservant to remind us, Lord God, that we need to always make you our shield, that we need not create our own shields and trust in horses and chariots and things and people, Lord God, but we must trust in you alone, O oh God. You said we must trust in you with all of our heart and lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you and you shall direct our path. I thank you tonight that you are our shield and our exceeding great reward. And I pray tonight, Lord God, that the word did not go over our heads tonight, that it impacted our very spirit. It was received in our very hearts tonight, Lord God. And I pray that your word would grow. It would germinate, Lord God. It would bring forth fruit out of our very life tonight, Lord God. Because, Lord God, you've been speaking profoundly. You've been speaking clearly. And, Lord God, there must be things in our life, oh God, that's trying to take your place. That's trying to remove, Lord God, the very worship that you should get to try to take your worship. But God, we don't want you to be jealous. We know that you're a jealous God. And Lord God, we see what you do when you are jealous, oh God. We see, Lord God, that you don't want your worship given to any other thing or any other person, but it all belongs to you. So I pray tonight, oh God, we consider our ways in all things, examine ourselves in light of your word, and allow you to shape us, allow you to mold us, allow you to allow you to help us to lay aside those things that so easily beset us so that we can continue to make you our shield because truly you are the glory and the lifter of our head. You are our shield and our exceeding great reward. And we know that when we call upon you, O oh God, that you hear and you answer prayer. And we come to you in confidence tonight knowing that you hear. We come to you in confidence knowing that tonight you brought us here tonight just for us to hear this word so that we can be enlightened, so that we can have a clearer understanding of what it is you expect of us. We honor you tonight. We magnify you tonight. Lord God, as we're about to leave this very house, I pray that we stay in that attitude of prayer, attitude of worship, attitude of meditation upon your word. And Lord God, that you bring us back together at the next appointed time. Give your angels charge over us. Keep us on the highways and byways as we are about to leave. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, 
our strength, and our redeemer. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. No retreat. No retreat. No retreat. Praise the Lord. Continue to let the Lord be the glory and the lifter of your head. For truly, he's our shield. Hallelujah. Go in the grace of God. And... Let's forget about